What is up and welcome back guys. So are you all ready for the fall edition of Smalls That Sell? I know that I am. So for those of you that are new to the channel and this series, it's all about breaking down high profit trending items so that you can put your own twist to it and build these things at home. One of my favorite times of the year to make things to sell is the fall. And the reason why is because it's actually covering a season and two holidays. So we have the fall in general. Everything is changing colors. People are working their way into Christmas and they are also getting ready for Halloween and Thanksgiving. The great thing about all of these items that will actually cover all three of those and be marketable for several months and of course all of these items will fall into that category of what people will spend money on what they will splurge on and you know from my past videos that's going to be their kids their grandkids holidays and decorating so this time of the year is the perfect time of the year to either put some extra cash in your pocket or simply make some of these super cool builds for you and your friends i have several builds to cover so let's go ahead and dive into this first one so while doing the research on the trending items from the big box stores i noticed something kind of different this year there's one item in particular that is being hit on hard just in different styles and that is pumpkins of course every single year pumpkins will be hit on but it seems like this year from the woodworking perspective there are several different styles that are in and that's good for us what i noticed is that almost every single one of these sites that i went to they have everything staged up really nice on a front porch and different height levels of decoration so instead of everything just being on the ground they're raising these things up using different types of decoration to create depth so when you're staging up your items make sure to do the same thing and one of the items that i will be covering in a bit will be perfect for of course selling as well as staging your items in that manner so this first one that I'm going to hit is from the OPB. Okay, so does this look familiar? We have pretty much covered something similar to this from the PB for every season. And the reason why that they keep bringing these things back for every single season is because they are selling these things. Okay, if you notice that any type of a big box store is repeating a look with just a little bit of a different theme, that means that they have had seasonal success with the previous ones. So these are the pumpkin trays, and these are not being marketed as charcuterie boards or cutting boards because PB has noticed that those terms are kind of going out or the market is being flooded with that. So yes, these are the same type of things that they were selling last year as charcuterie boards and cutting boards. By doing something as simple as changing the name, they have created an entirely different product. So these are just serving trays. These serving trays or serving boards come in two different sizes. The small version they are selling for $135 and the large version they're selling for $165. And they have done something a little different with one of these styles that I haven't seen them do yet. Typically everything so far, like the cookbook stands from the last video, everything was painted a solid smooth color. And then we would have a strip of darker wood going down the middle or it would be paint on paint. For the fall version, they actually have a pumpkin cutout that is completely natural with a painted strip going through the center. So since I've covered how they do this in previous videos, just a quick rundown is find a template of a pumpkin that you like. Any type of a design will work. It does not have to look identical to this. Just make sure that the stem is long enough on the template that you find that you can actually use it as a handle. And the handle is another little thing that they've changed up with this. For the painted ones, they are going for what we call this modern rustic look. And instead of using grass string or twine like they have for the natural ones, they're actually using leather. You can pick up a bundle of this thin leather stripping for really cheap on Amazon or your local big box store will probably sell the exact same material as real leather boot string. So once you have your template, you will just trace that out onto your material. Now these are a little bit larger. The small ones are 15 by 17 and the larger ones are 18 by 20. Now that's also counting the stem, but the base of this entire project is made out of pine. So we've discussed this in the last video. You can either glue up some three quarter inch pine to make your base or look at the pine shelving section of your local big box door. Again, oftentimes pine shelving is a lot cheaper than actually buying three quarter inch material and it comes in wider widths. So once you have your template on the material, stop. Do not cut this out yet. We want this material to stay square until we have this groove cut in there. And this groove is what is going to hold this strip. Let's just say that these strips are a quarter of an inch by one inch. That means that the groove that you need to put into your base to accept that needs to be a quarter of an inch deep and one inch wide. So once you know your width and your depth and you've actually traced this out onto your square or rectangle piece of wood, and now you can decide where you want your strips to actually go through the pumpkin. So yes, you could do this a lot faster if you had a dado stack on a saw, but if you do not, you can actually do this using a circular saw. Or even faster, if this material is a quarter of an inch thick, 
raise your table saw blade up a quarter of an inch and then just set your fence up where you can run the material face down through the saw and actually cut this notch out a blade thickness at a time and once the notch is removed now it's time to cut out the shape of this pumpkin and we're just going to use a jigsaw for this personally i like a jigsaw blade that looks like this this is called a scroll blade and it's a lot easier to maneuver with. So once you have your shape cut out, go ahead and sand around the corners and any of them that you are going to paint, go ahead and paint those before we put the wooden strip in there. And if you're making the natural one, go ahead and paint the wooden strip that will be inset into that one. Regardless of which pattern that you're going to be using to do this, I would recommend not painting inside of the notched out area that will actually receive the wooden strip. That way, whenever we glue in our strip, we'll have a strong wood to wood bond and you don't have to worry about the paint getting in the way. And that's all that we're going to be doing is putting some wood glue in that groove and then clamp down this strip. If you're making the natural board with the painted strip, I'm going to assume that they have sealed this with some food grade oil. So before you oil it, go ahead and glue in that painted strip. Once that's dry, then you can oil the whole thing. These things are super easy to make. Everyone that sees one of these will want one. Everyone that sees one of these now wants one, but they're not willing to pay $165. So you do you, you put your twist to it, you beat their market pricing and sell the heck out of these things. And before we jump into this next one, I'm just going to show you this. Okay, so my wife tried to sneak one by me here. I found this as part of her new fall decoration. This is a piece of MDF. Something that I could have easily made out of any type of scrap wood that I have around here. And that's all that they have done is put a base coat of black on this, came over the top with white, let that dry, and then stenciled in this saying, sanded it off a little bit, sold it to her for 10 bucks. Something that I could have made out of scrap wood, they sold it to her made out of MDF. I bet you wish you could have been a fly on the wall for that conversation. Okay, so this next one, this ladder, or is it a ladder? They're not advertising it as a ladder. They're advertising it as a towel rack. The reason why this is falling into the fall, see what I did there, category, is because I've noticed that a lot of these towel racks are actually using them as a part of their fall decorations. You know, they're wrapping like the fake leaves and stuff like that around it or hanging like the pumpkin banners or whatever. But it's all blending together to make this fall scene. We're going to make this the exact same way that we would have made some of the taller ones, but these are designed for hanging. So these things are super easy to make. And these would be the perfect items to decorate up with several different color schemes. So the side material is three quarters of an inch thick. It's two and a half inches wide and it's only 16 inches long. And you're going to need two of those. And for the rungs of the ladder, you are going to need three pieces of three quarter inch dowel rod just like this, that are 10 inches long. And then for the rope, if you decide to make it to where it's hangable, it's just a piece of rope. You can make it as long as you want. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is get all of my parts ready before I assemble this. There's a couple of different styles on these ladders. Some of them, the tops of the sideboards are actually rounded over and some they're just perfectly square. So if you wanna round those over, you can do that with a sander or you can do that with a jigsaw. But once you get done with whatever you're wanting to do, go ahead and stain or paint your parts. Once that dries, take your two sideboards, lay them flat on a table. I want you to measure to the four inch mark, the eight and the 12 inch mark. In the center of that board, drill down a half of an inch with a three quarter inch Fostner bit or a spade bit. And what that's gonna do is create a pocket for this to sit in. So once you have that done on both sides, go ahead and put just a little bit of wood glue in each one of the pockets that you've just drilled. Lay one of your sideboards flat, drop in your 10 inch rods, and then put your second sideboard on. And while you have it in that position, go ahead and just add a brad nail on the end of each one of those. Once that glue dries, it's not going anywhere. And then for adding this rope, Whatever the diameter of the rope is that you have, increase about like an eighth of an inch, drill your hose down an inch from the top, run it through, tie a knot, same thing for the other side, and you're done. It's as simple as that. They're wanting $25 to $30 for these things, and you could probably make it for less than two bucks. All right, so this next one, it is another kind of pumpkin looking thing. It's called a pumpkin sitter, okay? So I guess what they're saying whenever they're calling things sitters is they will sit up by themselves. So these really do not look like pumpkins, but what they're going for here is kind of like this folky Amish style look, which even though they kind of look odd, it's kind of a cool look. You know, it's different. And that is what this is all about, is creating something different. But this is super, super simple to make. And remember the material sizes that I'm about to tell you, because all those sizes will come into play for the last one where they've taken this idea and created a new product out of it. And to give you an example of what they did, I made this. Painted mine orange. I kind of like it. But they had made three different sizes of this. And then they just attach them together. They've just nailed and glued three different heights of this to make one big unit that sits up by itself. So they are selling this sitter for 52 bucks. 
you can make it for a heck of a lot cheaper than that and sell it for a heck of a lot cheaper than that. So this entire thing is 10 inches wide by 25 inches tall. That's including the top of the stem. But there are no boards in this build that are actually 10 inches wide. If you notice that they are actually layered and offset to give it that width. It looks like the material that they're using here may be 6 to 8 inches wide, depending on the offset that you want. But honestly, this would make a perfect fence picket build. Okay, so five and a half inch material. I'll cut the tallest board right around 20 inches. The second one maybe around 14. And then the shortest one, it's a little bit more narrow than the other one. So maybe take an inch off the width of that. Cut that one right around seven inches tall. And then as far as getting the shapes on these, it's a duplicated shape like this. That's all that they've done is made just a little arch, flattened it out a little bit, and then a sharp drop off. Why this design? I have no clue. You can change it up to any way that you would like. I'm just telling you how they did theirs. Then the rest is going to be painting it the way that you would like. They have a white on white and then an orange up front. Personally, if it were me, I would change it up a little bit. Maybe the back one be white, the middle one like a light gray, and then the bottom kind of like that distressed orange there. And then you would just glue and nail all of those together. As far as the stems, when I first saw this, I thought that they were actually inset into the wood, but they're not. If you take a close look at this, you can take any type of thin scrap wood that you have. Like for this example, I just used a piece of quarter inch plywood. But if you had a thin solid material, it would look a lot better. And I really like the way that they have kind of distressed this up. They've lightly whitewashed the stems and then sanded that back off, kind of giving it this dull look. The back and the middle stems look to be about six inches long, maybe with four inches of overhang. And then the smallest one's a little bit thinner, a little shorter, maybe four to five inches. Glue, brad now those on, and then distress the entire thing just along the edges. And then as far as decorating this thing up, that is up to you. They've just used grass string or a piece of twine and a little ribbon that says something about fall. But you really decorate this up any way that you want again super super easy build they want 56 bucks for this thing if you make it out of a fence picket you would have two to four dollars in it you price these things at 25 to 30 dollars I don't think that people would blink an eye. And, and if you haven't had a chance to check out our Patreon community or our Discord community, check that out. I'll throw a link in the description for both of those, but we are having a great time sharing our builds, talking about tools, you name it, we discuss it. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, check it out and we'll see you there. And so for this next one, do you remember at the beginning how I told you that people were staging up their decorations in different levels? Well, this is one of the ways that they are doing it. For a bench that is similar to this, they're wanting $180 for. So whenever I was doing the research and I first saw this, it reminded me of one of the styles of farmhouse benches that I used to make to sell with my harvest tables. So what I decided to do is just take that simple design and make a two foot bench out of it. Now the bench that they are selling here is made out of three quarters of an inch material. So that kind of tells me that this is just intended to be a decorative piece and really not to be used as a bench all year round. So I decided to make mine out of inch and a half material. It's actually where I got the scraps to make this out of. So if you want to make a bench and a pumpkin by a two by 10 and a fence picket, it'll make more sense here in a minute. And you can make both. But by using an inch and a half material for the seat as well as the legs, it's going to make this thing super sturdy. So not only can you use it for your staging and your decor, you can actually use it as a bench. This is a super easy build, but if you would like the plans for this, I'll throw those in the Etsy shop as well and the link in the description. So to make this, start off with your two by 10, which is actually nine and a quarter inches wide. Go ahead and cut off those rounded edges and make it a solid nine inches wide. So now let's go ahead and start by cutting our parts from our now inch and a half by nine inch board. The bench top or the seat itself is 24 inches long. So you'll need a 24 inch piece of that. And then the legs, we'll need two boards cut at 18 inches. And that's all that we need from that board. Now let's cut our fence picket into a four inch strip. From that four inch strip, cut two boards that are 24 inches long. That's gonna make up the two aprons or side boards. Then with the last part of that four inch strip, let's go ahead and cut this little shelf or leg support, whatever that you would like to call it. And it's gonna be 17 inches long. Then you'll have a long strip of wood left from the fence picket that's gonna be like an inch, an inch and a quarter wide, however thick it was to start with. Let's take that board and cut two eight inch sections that will act as this shelf support. And now let's go ahead and make our legs out of those 18 inch boards. First thing that you need to do is at the very top, you need to cut a 10 degree bevel. Then at the very bottom, you'll need to cut an opposite 10 degree bevel. These 10 degree bevels are what allow us to have this pitch and the bench to still stay sturdy and flat. So once those are cut, let's take our bottom and cut our design into it. That's all that I did was measure over an inch and a half on each side, made a mark, measured up five inches and over three inches. 
and made a mark. Same thing on this side, up five over three, made the mark, and then took a straight edge and connected those points and cut that out with a jigsaw. We'll repeat that step for both legs and then we'll make our aprons. So for our aprons, we have our four by 24 inch board. I measured down an inch and a half and then I measured over an inch and a half to the bottom. Connected those two points and made my angle cut. Did the exact same thing for the opposite side and that is it for the aprons. Now the last piece that we would need to actually cut will be the shelf. So we already have it at 17 inches. And the only thing that we're gonna do is put a 10 degree bevel on each side. That way it fits snugly in between the two legs. So with all of our parts cut, assembly is pie. I started by putting a few pocket holes on the inside of my two legs. Then I attached them to my seat, four inches in from each side, using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. So with the legs in place, the next thing that I attached was the aprons. That's all that you'll need to do is put some wood glue on the edge of the seat, as well as the leg that it's gonna be attached to, and then just brad nail it from the outside. And then we'll do the exact same thing for the opposite side. And then for the shelf, starting with these eight inch brackets. So from the bottom, I measured up five and one eighth, and that's to the bottom of the bracket. Glued and nailed those in place on both sides. I centered the shelf or the brace on the brackets and glued and nailed that in to place and that's all there was to it it did not take very long at all to create something that you could use as decoration or an actual piece of furniture so they're wanting 180 dollars for something like this that you can technically build for less than 15 bucks but as far as pricing on something like this you need to check and test your area i would market it as like farmhouse or primitive americana but the first one that you make use it for staging all of your fall items together and you'll probably have people that want to buy the whole set. And if you've made it this far into the video and you like things like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell because I have plenty more where this came from. All right, so this next one I'll just cover really quick because check this out. Do those look familiar? It's just they're not all fastened together. So this is not a pumpkin sitter. They are marketing these as pumpkin plaques. The difference is these actually have sayings on them. That is the only difference. So they've taken the exact same design and made two different products out of it. Pretty smart. But for these, those exact same dimensions that I gave you earlier, use those because they did. And like we have talked about in the past, there's a couple of different ways that you can get this lettering. You can go on Amazon, buy the stencils for these sayings, or they don't even have to be sayings. They can just be fall pictures. It could be leaves or something like that. Or for those out there that have a laser engraver, you can do what I'm doing now. I have one set up in my Thunder Laser, so let's go ahead and check that out. And this is how it turned out. Pretty cool, I think. So if you have access to a laser, it will definitely give you a more clean, polished look. If not, use stencils. I mean, they did. And they're selling this size for 20 bucks a piece. Just thought I'd throw this one in there. This is an example of how they thought outside of the box to turn one product technically into four different products. Well, this was a hard episode to pick items out to cover because we were kind of early into the fall. But as we get deeper in the fall, more products will be released. And if those items catch my eye, I will make sure to cover those for you. If you're a Patreon or Discord member and you have an idea, shoot it to the ideas channel that we have there. So as you seen by some of these odd shaped, almost abstract items that these huge companies are selling as fall decor, it's just a reminder that every person out there has different tastes and every person sees something different. So even if you come up with a design that you're afraid to put out that people may think that it looks odd or is different or it's not traditional, that is what you want and that is what people actually want. Look at your great artist and the different styles of art that they create. And then you also have buyers for each style of that art. But just think about that. Keep that in mind. Put your own ideas, your own twist to your builds, and you may be surprised at just how much people love your work. Till next time, guys, we'll see ya.